so here uh, very good morning to all of you so in this particular session we will be discussing uh, you know regarding the uh, recruitment uh, that is recently uh, released by upsc for aeronautical officer in dgca right so this is the dgca vacancies by upsc now here uh, the website link and all will be provided in the particular uh, link after this particular uh, video and here this is uh, the vacancy which is uh, gonna fill by upsc right in this one we will see the outlines like what are all the vacancy details right what are all the vacancy details we have uh, who will be eligible to apply for this uh, uh, aeronautical officer post then what is the age limit important dates and recruitment process right and and some other uh, other things we will see here uh, regarding this particular post right so this is the outline of today's uh, session uh, which we will be conducting here now regarding the vacancy detail this is the vacancy number uh, under this uh, upsc section here they have uh, basically allotted 26 vacancies for the post of aeronautical officer in uh, directorate general of civil aviation under the ministry of civil aviation so this is coming under the uh, ministry of civil aviation but this post is under the dgca right so uh, all of you might be knowing that uh, what is the dgca dgca is basically the directorate general of civil aviation is the regulatory body for civil aviation in india which is taking care of all the regulations of air transport services and uh, to ensure the safety and uh, security of a particular, uh, you know, uh, whatever the services which is being offered by the civil aviation. So they basically taking care of safety and security, right? So in this one, the number of posts is 26. Out of the 26 posts which they have uh, released, out of the 26 posts which they have released, in that 26 posts, the three posts has been uh, allotted for what? The three posts allotted for PWDD, that means a uh, person with the benchmark disability right so all you can say that uh, if you exclude these three vacancies so you will have 23 vacancies 23 vacancies and three vacancies for pwd right here it is for non uh, disabled candidates or pwd pwbd candidates Getting my point. In that, uh, we have the categories wise vacancy like uh, SC category 4 vacancy, ST1, OBC 06, and EWS 3 vacancies. Unreserved, we have uh, 12 vacancies. Right now, for the post which they have mentioned, aeronautical officer. Right in that, whatever the degree you require, the degree required in aeronautical, electrical, EC, mechanical or metallurgy student can also apply from a recognized universities that means a mechanical and then you have ec double e and metallurgy students can also apply metallurgy student can also apply for this particular post but you can apply under second criteria first is you should have a degree either in mechanical either in electrical either in aeronautical or in metallurgical or in ec but you should have experience in what we, whatever we call aerospace domain. You might have, uh, you should be, you should have experienced uh, in aircraft design and development, including the aircraft, electrical, electronics, mechanical system, right? Or for example, to explain this, uh, suppose a mechanical engineering student is there who done his BTEC, for example, from some X university, and then he might be working in, uh, let's say, Collins Aerospace. Or he might be working in Boeing. He might be working in Boeing. He might be working in Boeing. Or he might be working in some other, uh, you know, aerospace industries. Or, some in, uh, or in industries where you have some uh, uh, hands-on experience on aircraft design and designing of particular aircraft component right so this is a basically the requirement and that too at least you should have a two years experience in 
aircraft design and development, including the aircraft electrical, electronics, or mechanical system, or airworthiness engineering, right? Airworthiness engineering, right? So obviously that those who are working uh, in private sector and they are aiming for again government job uh, or switching from private to government. So this is one of the best opportunity that we we can get through UPSC particular uh, exam or UPSC interview, right? So I guess this thing is clear regarding the vacancy. Total 26 vacancies are there. You should have a degree either in aeronautical or electrical or electronics or mechanical you should have two years experience in aerospace domain all i want to say right then this is a desirable uh, experience they require it's not a mandatory but they are saying if you have then you will be given priority uh, means you will be on the priority list why because uh, they have mentioned selection process also that i will be clarifying after some point of time but here Desirable qualification means one year experience you require in aeronautical research and development or design or laboratory investigation of failed aircraft parts or flight recorder involved in accident or incident or airworthiness engineering. Right? Why? Because uh, this is a post basically where uh, they are focusing too much, you know, on uh, what we call the failed component, right? Because airworthiness engineering are responsible for ensuring the airworthiness of aircraft and related equipment, right? This would be free from any kind of failure in all the circumstances, right? So basically, if you work in that domain where you have handled the failed aircraft parts, you have investigation in laboratory, you have done something designing either by software, CAD CAM or CATIA, or you might have done some, uh, some uh, you know, basically uh, research on that particular component, failed component then you will be given uh, you know you will be having some advantage in this particular recruitment process and whatever the age limit is there that is age limit is uh, one, 35 years for uh, uh, undeserved and ews and then you have 38 years for obc then again 40 years you have for stc again some age relaxation for government uh, offices Right, those who are working in government sectors. So this is the particular uh, things we have here. So uh, regarding this uh, age limit, essential qualifications, and then what is the uh, we have seen essential qualifications, and then what is the uh, essential uh, you know experience which they require. So these two things are very very important for this particular vacancies. Right. Now coming to the important dates. The dates will be here. Online application already started. That is uh, from 22nd of this month of July, right? The closing date for online recruitment process through website will be uh, 10th of August. And the last date for the printing of completely submitted uh, application will be up to 11th of August. So still we have the dates. You can apply for this particular post, right? Now, here coming back to uh, this further selection process. Here, uh, regarding selection process, it is very important to note that for this particular 26 vacancies, uh, first of all, they will see whether number of applicants applicants are in uh, what? In uh, basically, they have in high number or low number. When the number of applicants are in large. Then commission will adopt shortlisting criteria to restrict the number of candidates to be called for interview. Why? Because if they will be calling for, uh, let's say, 26 vacancy and they are calling, let's say, 250 candidates, they have to take the interview for 250 candidates and that will take some uh, time to complete the process. So definitely they will go for uh, 1 to 5 or 1 to 8 or maybe maximum to maximum 1 to 10, not more than that. Right? So that a recruitment can be completed uh, within given time, right? Although the uh, particular recruitment process will be finished, whatever the vacancies you are getting before this particular election year, right? So you should not be worrying about that. Now, if the number of applicants are still high, they will they will adopting any of these particular uh, methods to restrict or to basically uh, shortlist the number of candidates so that 
the remaining number of candidates can eliminate there itself on the basis of desirable qualifications right we have seen what is the desirable qualifications right we have seen what is the desirable qualification desirable qualification is nothing but degree in aeronautical electrical mechanical right and on the basis of that second sub, uh, why the, they have mentioned the first point because some candidates they might have degree in production and mechanical they will be eliminated only they mention degree in mechanical means they have not mentioned anything about production and mechanical engineering on the basis of higher educational qualification than the minimum prescribed in the advertisement now here if you have other than btech you have mtech also again more number of candidates are belonging to mtech they will be given uh, preferences over the btech candidates so that the btech candidates who are in high number they can be eliminated right then they they, they might be adopting this on the basis of higher experience in the relevant field than the minimum prescribed they have mentioned 2 years let's say the number of candidates who are belonging to more than 2 years they may have 3 years they may have 4 years they may have 5 years experience they will be given higher preferences right so the low prefer uh, low experience candidates can be eliminated very easily now then they may adopt this particular fourth uh criteria like, like, uh, by saying by counting experience before or after the acquisition of essential qualification essential qualification is they have mentioned is let's say degree btech for example so they mentioned that btech is required or degree is required in the mechanical in aeronautical in ec or in electrical or in metallurgical but during the completion of btech if you have any experience before also let's say you have done some kind of training again they will be counted that training also if more number of candidates will be there number of candidates will be higher number of candidates are higher for example then they might be seeing which candidates have some uh, basically some training before or during the btech period they will be given preferences right like that by invoking experience even in case where there is a, when there is an where, where there is a no experience mentioned either as essential qualification or desirable qualifications so again in this 26 vacancies which they have released they have clearly mentioned that essential uh, what we have required experience they have required essential experience they already mentioned so no point of there is a no use of this uh, invoking this experience even there is a no experience required because the 26 vacancy they have clearly mentioned in that for all the vacancies of 26 post they required essential qualification of 2 years in aerospace domain or even though after uh, uh, after uh, basically filtering by this many points five points is still the number of candidates are even higher then they might adopt the recruitment test right and usually this thing will happen because uh, uh the situation and all you can say the number of candidates the number of applicants will be in a higher number right that to for this step of a very good post there is a high chance that the number of posts will be in on the higher side and you can see that uh, the branches we have so many branches which are eligible for this particular post right so in that case they might they might be holding a recruitment test right generally the weightage will be given 75% to that recruitment test and 25% to the interview but here again there is a trick what is the trick after mentioning the selection process again they will be conducting either only interview based on the number of candidates or written exam plus interview so they can take the selection by using uh, these two steps either by interview or written test plus interview in both the cases my dear friend minimum qualification is there in interview minimum marks is there in interview how much for unreserved and ews you should get 50 marks for obc you should get 45 marks for stsc and pwd you should get 40 marks and out of the total marks which is nothing but 100 marks out of the 100 you should have 50 marks that is a minimum qualification marks if you are not getting even though you get very good marks in written examination that will not be counted for the merit list so this particular minimum qualification is not only for the uh, only interview procedure 
if you have written exam plus interview again an in interview you have to score again minimum here also like this so by both the recruitment mode either only by interview or by written test plus interview you have to score minimum 50 marks out of 100 for general and ew standards and for different category they already mentioned here here right so these are the things they have that is a very very important regarding this particular uh, aeronautical officer post uh, in dgca now applicant fees uh, application fees is very low here 25 rupees is there and that too for uh, general candidates and OBC candidates and EWS candidate, but for STSC and all female candidates who belonging to general category also, they are exempted to pay any kind of fees, right? So only the fee is what 25 rupees. Again, how to apply for this particular post? So the link I have I have been providing here, and the link will be provided in the link also below this uh, uh, videos. There you can check it out and you can go through all, all the detailed applica uh, applications, a detailed notification PDF, along with you can register for this particular post, right? So the last date, you remember that 10th August is there and the final submission you can done by 11th of August, right? So this is the particular website link, upscaonline.nic.in. Right? So thank you all. If any detail, uh, any further detailing you want it, any further detailing you want it, you can have, you can contact on this particular number, right? And you can also visit, uh, visit on this particular link. Thank you all.